This is a bigger model and it comes in its own outer shipping carton. And as it says on the box, it's a Tadano AC 7.450-1. So this is a seven axle mobile crane. The delivery man will have to carry over 10 pounds, or if he prefers to carry something different, it's about 4.6 kilograms. Let's open up the shipping carton and see what's inside. And to provide protection, the model box is spaced from the edge with spacers. So let's just check the weight of the model box and it's eight pounds 13 ounces, or a nice round four kilograms. The box is in the typical Tadano house style, and it has line drawings of the crane on it. Looking at the back, there's an expanse of white space, and there is the model number and it's officially licensed merchandise. And it's made by IMC Models. Opening up the model box and out come the usual pair of expanded polystyrene trays. And the first thing we see is a manual, which we will look at in a moment. And it's always nice when there's no tape to cut because the trays on this model are held together by plastic clips. Lifting off the top tray and we can't see too much because all the parts are wrapped in soft paper. And it's all done carefully because there's even paper to separate the hoist rope from touching the boom and staining it. Let's have a look through the included build manual. And after a couple of blank pages, there's a packing photo for the model. And then all the various parts are identified, including a good selection of tools and bagged pins. The manual is very good and goes on to show the assembly and various features of the model. The model is reeved out of the box, which is a good thing because it's not the easiest hook to reeve. We'll start off the crane in transport mode, so we'll attach the hook at the front. We then have another part to attach to the boom head, and that's a wind speed indicator. To keep the weight down on the axles, the crane could travel like this, but there's also a sideways super lift attachment. And we're going to fix that on and carry it in transport mode also. The main part of the SSL comprises of two separate beams and one clips on each side of the boom. It will stay in place like this, but for any kind of operational use, we need to pin it as well. And the pins come in numbered bags, so you know which ones to use. Before fitting the pins, it's best to line up the holes. And the easiest way to do that is to use a pointer to bring them into line. There are two pins to insert for each beam. And a pair of tweezers is helpfully included with the model to help you put them in. There's really no hope of just using your fingers. The next task is to connect up the pendant bars. And these are joined using our old favourite, the tiny nut and bolt. Only one nut and bolt key is provided, so you have to use your fingers as well, but it's no problem. And the manual tells you to remove bolts from the main boom, but in fact they're not installed in the factory. But there's enough in the bags, so you can make the connections. And these fit well, and they're easy to screw in. With the pendants fixed to the boom, we can raise the SSL beams and then connect the pendants to the end of the SSLs. It's not entirely clear how the pendant bars should be resting at this stage, but we'll be able to get something tidy once we close the SSL up. Next, you have to run the ropes off of each SSL beam and then tie them off at the boom head. So that completes the full transport configuration and let's see what it weighs. And it's about four pounds, two ounces, which converts to 1.87 kilograms. Looking underneath, and this is a typically detailed IMC model. The suspension and drive shafts are modeled as are small tanks. 
and it's always a nice touch when you see some hoses. The tyres have a good tread pattern. The driving cab has got sleek beacon lights, and all of the mirrors and windscreen wipers are modelled. The lights are replicated well, and there's a chain at the front for securing the hook. The cab door handles are indicated, and the steps up into the cab have textured surfaces. The black skirt above the wheels is of a rigid plastic rather than soft, and looking at the wheels the driven hubs are different from the non-driven. The detail behind the carrier cab is very good, and there's a variety of textured surfaces. Also various parts such as the exhaust system are nicely modelled, and it all combines to give a realistic appearance. Heavy metal spreader plates are included and they've got proper lifting points. And the outriggers have got nice smooth pistons, and there are graphics on the beam. The crane cab is also highly detailed with warning graphics on the outside. And there are lights and textured walkways. There are also metal grab rails. Detailing inside the cab is also very good, and it all looks realistic. Behind the crane cab there are nice textured walkways. And there are more tiny graphics to add to the realism. A very nice detail is the toothed slewing ring. The counterweight blocks are all separate pieces, and they have usable lifting lugs and decent graphics. The counterweight tray has an additional winch, and the quality of the rope is very good. The boom ram has a metal jacket with graphics applied, and the modelling of the sideways superlift is also very good, and it's nearly all in metal. A very nice touch is the detailing of the collars on the individual boom sections. The access platforms have got mesh walkways, and the boom sections themselves have got a very nice profile, with a two-tone finish. The boom head has got connection points for a luffing jib, and the sheaves in the boom head are separate pieces. There's also a safety cut-off chain. The included hook is a large metal piece, and it has three separate sheaves inside. And the load plate is a metal part. Going back underneath again and all of the wheels turn independently. And every axle has its own steering. The range of movement is generally pretty good. And also implemented on the model is some independent suspension. Out we go onto the Cranes Etc test track, and the model rolls along well in a straight line, although not necessarily every wheel is perfectly grounded. The independent steering on the axles allows all of the steering modes of the real crane to be replicated, so you can simulate low speed sharp cornering, and that works well. Or if you like, you can go for the party trick of sideways crab steering. A fairly common feature these days is the rotating access ladders that get you up onto the crane deck. And as you would expect you can extend all of the outriggers and they are two stage beams. The pads screw down revealing smooth pistons. And the range of movement is very good. So when you put the pad onto a spreader plate then it is possible to raise the crane substantially. And it's easily able to pose wheels free. Also very good is the general profile of the outrigger beams when they're loaded. Another feature on the cab is the pull out walkway and the tweezers help you pull it out. And you can install handrails for working mode and they get left off for transport mode. Raising the boom is an easy affair and only the SSL pendants have got a little bit messy. To lock the boom elevation you use the well tried system of an allen key on a tiny grub screw. And it works very well. The counterweight tray comes with separate handrail sections and these get plugged in. And if you want to pose the crane in self-assembly mode you can put the ballast train on the carrier deck. Once you find the right position you can add the counterweight on each side making sure that it's a balanced load. And then the real crane would rotate and attach its counterweight. On the model we'll attach the counterweight tray using giant telehandlers. And it's secured in place by using four steel pins. Once it's properly attached we can load up the counterweight as before. And you don't have to use the full stacks if you don't want to. The telescopic sections have locking points at 45%, 90% and 100%.
and the winch works very well through the supplied key. You push it in to disengage the brake and it rotates freely. And the hook works well with some load on. The hook on the hook block is also very nice because it has a full range of movement. And even the crane driver can enjoy putting his head back with the tilting cab. The sideways super lift on the model works very well. Each side has a winch drum which you operate with a small key and it's possible to get a decent tension, which stiffens up the whole crane. The beams also rotate out nicely. Another small feature on the sideways superlift system is the moving access platforms. This crane has a seven section boom, so let's get on and do a dim check. And at full extension, it's about 64 inches or 162 centimeters. IMC has produced a high quality model of this seven axle mobile crane. It is well made and it combines a high standard of detailing with lots of good functionality. And of course, this crane would also look very good in different company colours. Overall, the whole realisation of the model is excellent. Mm -hmm. 